Hello, this is Logan. Logan is a marine science student. He is deciding which coral restoration technique is viable and sustainable for recovery of coral reefs. So today we will be helping Logan. Before we begin, there are two methods that are commonly used for coral restoration which are by fragmentation and the use of artificial structures. Fragmentation is the process at which a living coral is split into fragments which then eventually grows into individual organisms. Another commonly used method is by creating artificial structures that acts as substrates for corals to grow on. So now, let us weigh the pros and cons of these techniques. The use of coral fragments is often favoured as it has faster growth rate of corals, increased coral reproduction, Restoration can be done without transplantation and increase survival of coral under adverse environmental conditions where survival rate can be increased by increasing the size of coral fragments. However, the downside of use of coral fragments are the need of removing corals by either fragmenting or the entire colony, limiting the chance of coral fragments to grow or generate themselves to form a new colony, Besides that, there are chances of coral fragments could not attach to the substrate and eventually dies. Furthermore, coral fragment use is limited to coral types. As an example, the conventional coral fragmentation is not suitable for massive corals. Let us look into the use of artificial reef structures. Artificial reefs are proven to be successful in supporting coral growth. Besides that, it is a relatively cheaper method for coral restoration and it creates room for creativity in creating the substrate. As an example, ships and old car skeletons are sunken into ocean to be substrate for reef structures. The artificial structure also serves as habitat for various marine organisms. Moreover, these man-made reefs become tree spots for divers and this contributes to the development of socio-economy of the people in the area. However, the use of artificial reef structures has several downsides. The materials used to construct artificial reef may contaminate seawater. As an example, ships which are commonly used as artificial reef have residue oil and grease, and this may cause disease or marine pests. Besides that, it is not as stable as nature reef. If strong storm or currents happen, they might be washed away and cause more harm than good. So now that we have analysed the pros and cons of these techniques, Logan can decide which core restoration technique is viable and sustainable for recovery of reefs. It is important to note that these methods are only viable when it is carried out in conditions where it is suitable for growth of corals and done in protected areas. Coral restoration methods helps to speed up recovery of corals at which natural growth takes a very long time. However, Without addressing the key issue in decline of corals, such as rising sea temperature or impacts from human activities, efforts of coral restoration will go to waste if they eventually still die due to stress from coral bleaching and so on. Therefore, more studies should be conducted in improving coral restoration methods that is able to overcome the key issues such as rising sea temperature in effort to save our reefs for the benefit of all organisms. That's all from us. Thank you for watching.